Okay, okay students so this is the next model so already you would have seen in the theory class this is the formation of cardiac loop so in this model what you have to know is the what are the various parts of fused endothelial heart tube okay so this is the first stage actually this is the arterial end of the heart tube this is the venous end of the heart tube so if you trace from arterial end so this part is the bulbous cardis so this is bulbous cardis this is ventricle this is atrium this is your sinus venosus with two horns right and left horns of the sinus venosus okay so now this is bulbous cardis already you know that bulbous cardis is divided into two so this is called as trunkus arteriosus this part is called as cornus put together it is bulbous cardis so this is ventricle so this is your atrium so this is your sinus venosus with right horn and left horn so during the formation of cardiac loop mainly this ventricular part descends downwards and ventrally so it is coming down like this at the same time this atrial part goes up and behind okay so finally if you see this part will be on the dorsal aspect this part will be on the ventral aspect so that is the formation of cardiac loop okay so once again here so this is your trunkus arteriosus so trunkus arteriosus gives rise to our ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk conus part of the bulbous cardis is absorbed into the right ventricle as well as left ventricle so what is absorbed into the right ventricle is called as infundibulum so that is the outflowing part of the right ventricle what is absorbed into the left ventricle is called as aortic vestibule so that is the outflowing part of the left ventricle so infundibulum of the right ventricle corresponds to aortic vestibule of the left ventricle so that is your conus once again if you take this ventricular part so this will be divided into right ventricle and left ventricle by the formation of interventricular septum now this is your atrial part here also the septum will be formed to divide it into right atrium and left atrium so right horn and left horn of the sinus venosus that also already you know right horn is getting enlarged and getting absorbed into the your right atrium so if you take the development of right atrium anterior rough part is derived from this primitive atrial chamber posterior smooth part is derived from right horn of the sinus venosus the left horn undergoes degeneration to form your coronary sinus okay so now you see this is at the end of your formation of cardiac loop as i told already this part along with ventricle descends downwards to the right at the same time anterior so that's why these ventricular chambers are anterior like that this part goes up okay another thing it is dorsal it is going behind that's why both atria are on the dorsal aspect both ventricles are on the ventral aspect so this is the formation of cardiac loop so because of that our entire heart is getting accommodated into the pericardial cavity so that is the formation of cardiac loop if there is any defect in the formation of cardiac loop instead of this your bulbous cardis and ventricular part descends downwards to the left that only leads to dextrocardia okay so this model is mainly for formation of cardiac loop so you should be able to identify the various parts of the fused endothelial heart tube in which direction the loop is formed okay thank you